Hey mamas, today I want to talk to you about the importance of feeling rested and refreshed as moms and especially as homeschool moms, as moms, stay at home moms, moms that are with our kids all day, really finding ways that we can feel rested and refreshed and able to pour out in all of the different ways that we do without feeling burnt out and without feeling exhausted and weary. So if you're new here, my name's Christina and I am a homeschooling mom of five kids ranging in ages three through 15. So something that I've been talking about quite a bit on my Instagram over the last couple of months is this concept of rest and how multifaceted it is and how yes, sleep is important, but sleep isn't the only way that we get rest, right? And so you could get tons of sleep, but still not feel rested. And so I wanna talk to you today about some of the things that I do that help me to feel rested and refreshed as a mom. And then some of the practical things, some of my favorite things that help me feel rested and inspired and encouraged as a mom. The first one that I wanna share with you is Learning Well Journal. Now. If you haven't heard of Learning Well Journal, it is a seasonal journal. It comes out four times a year, and I actually just completed my first year of issues. So I started getting it in the spring, and then I got the summer, and then the fall, which is so beautiful, and I'm actually still working through a little bit of it because I try to savor it and take my time and it usually takes me like the whole season to get through it and then I just got my winter copy in the mail and I wanted to talk with you about this first today because there are only a few days for you to still get your hands on the winter version and then if you sign up you would not get it until spring which is what happened to me last year because I saw the winter one and I was like oh that looks so good and then I signed up too late and I didn't get um, the winter one, I ended up getting the spring one, which is really, really good as well. So Learning Well Journal is a specific focus on faith, family, home, and homeschool. All things that are top priority for me. So why does this media fit into my life? Because it focuses on all of the things that are most important to me. And so before I dive more into Learning Well Journal, I just want to stop there for a second and say what you consume, what media you're consuming in any form, books, magazines, journals, movies, TV, social media, the internet, all of those things have an effect on your heart and your mind and your spirit. So I talk about this a lot and how we have to be really careful with what our children consume, but the same is true for us. Things can leave us feeling anxious, frustrated, angry, overwhelmed, exhausted, hopeless, and we really need to be careful what we're consuming. And so for me, I try to avoid things. I've learned my lesson. And I've tried to avoid things that do that and instead fill my heart and my mind and my spirit with things that are good and lovely. And so Learning Well Journal is just that, keeping the focus on the things that are most important to me in my ministry as wife and mother. So I wanted to share with you a couple of my favorite articles from each of the last year of learning well journals which you can subscribe to annually or quarterly it's really hard to choose my favorite articles because I honestly have not read one thing that I haven't liked one thing that I love is that there's always kind of a theme so for last spring it was resourcefulness I love that there is a letter from Alicia Hutchinson then I love this Ask Alicia section. She is a seasoned homeschool mom of over 15 years, so her advice is well received by me. I can tell you that for sure. Um, and then I love that there is a section on things to do, the different months of the season. And there is always a section on crafts, so there are like hands-on things you can do, some spring favorites. 
There are book picks and book reviews in each issue. Ideas to go along with books in here. And then because these are seasonal, I just love how it includes seasonal rhythms and topics and ideas for leaning into the season through connection with your family. This is probably, if I had to pick, one of my favorite aspects of Learning Well is the day in the life. So if you follow Learning Well on Instagram, you know that they do this on Instagram as well, but I love being able to take my time and read through, hearing about other families' homeschool days and how they go, and just really getting to see the beauty of how different each homeschool is. So I really enjoy this. So that would be one of my favorite aspects. Um, so thinking about home, things like shopping secondhand, some tips from seasoned thrifters. There's usually something about morning time. There's always recipes. So I love that as well. There are new recipes to try. And then I loved this. We actually made this natural cleaner. So, so many wonderful things. There's a spring cleaning checklist. There's always, okay, so here's another one of my favorite things is that there's always a section on teens. And so there's so many things out there in the homeschooling world that focuses on littles. So as a mom of a teenager and one that is going to be a teenager within the next year, I am so thankful for that, to hear from moms who have done this before us. And I actually purchased this book because of this recommendation in Learning Well. And I read this with my boys and I would not be surprised if much of their inspiration for their business that they just started recently together came from Created for Work. So things on meal planning in this one. So just so beautiful, such a beautiful, beautiful magazine. Here's on homeschooling on a budget. And then in the back, another one of my favorite things, meals on a budget. Another one of my favorite things, here's some of the recipes, is the man-to-man -man section. So this is written by a dad to dads. And so this one was written by Alicia's husband, Jared. And I just love that it includes dads because although they aren't usually the main person facilitating and overseeing homeschooling, they are still a part of the equation, right? And so I love that this includes them. So that gives you like an overall kind of idea of how it's set up. And then I just want to share with you a couple of things from each of the other journals that I really loved. So summer was about attentiveness. So I'm just going to flip through to a few of my favorites. So this man to man was really, really, really good. I even read these, <laughs> even though they're for the men, I actually get a lot out of them as well. Attentiveness breeds trust about how like really paying attention really does build trust with our kids. Here's some books for teens. So I really liked that inclusion as well and how to choose the best books for your teens. So this is by Jamie Erickson. And if you know her, she is incredible. I've had the pleasure of hearing her speak in person and she's amazing. There are some more recipes in here. Oh, this was a really good one too. This is also about teenagers. I remember reading this, Don't Let Go, Being There for Your Teenagers. This is by Brandy McIntosh. And if you don't already follow her on Instagram, you must because she has so much wisdom on raising teens. And this was definitely a favorite article of mine. Epic homeschool road trips. That's pretty cool. Oh, I liked this one on outdoor spaces. Yes, an invitation to gather, creating out of door spaces, which if you know me, you know that I love being outside as much as possible. So I really enjoyed those recommendations in there. And then we actually were featured for the first time in the spring journal. So that was really exciting. We shared a homeschool day in the life. And I'd be interested to go back and read this now and see if it's still the same or if things have changed because there, things are always changing, right? And then learning through literature. Let me see.
Okay, so I loved this as well. The Summer Book Picks Audio Edition was super helpful because we travel school quite a bit and that is our time that we listen to audiobooks. So I really, really enjoyed going through this and seeing if there were things in here. Like we actually did listen to Miracles on Maple Hill on audiobook and we loved it. And so that gives you a gist of the summer version. The fall, oh, this one, you guys, I, I was going to say this might have been my favorite, but I would say that about all of them. Okay, so this was definitely a favorite article of mine from fall. This was by Ashley Williams of Grace and Grit. I'm sure you guys know her, but this is Wisdom Found in Education was such a good article. Really enjoyed that one. Remembering Your Why was also so, so good. And just kind of keeping that perspective and purpose. Planning the high school years. I mean, guys, it's hard, honestly, to choose a favorite. There are such good recipes in here. This is a section about road schooling. So, you know, I was excited to see that. This is four out of the box homeschooling methods. Ideas for setting your Thanksgiving table. Loving your homeschool space organizing and then this day in the life was by Annie Schrader so I actually really this is probably my favorite thing is reading the day in the life so if I had to choose one thing that would be it morning time with teens I really enjoyed this a lot like keeping that connection with your teens that morning time and those connection points don't have to just be gone So this was such, such a beautiful addition as well. Now, last but certainly not least is the winter edition, which is the one that you can get your hands on. So I'm so excited to share it with you. So I'll just give you a couple sneak peeks. Lots of recipes in here. How to start a book club I thought was super adorable. Now, Again, my favorite is always the day in the life, but I was super excited because my friend Wendy was featured and shared a day in her life. She is such a sweet mama. I just love her so much. I got to hug her in person, which was super special in Tennessee last spring. And then also one thing that I'm really excited about is we got to be featured again in the winter edition talking about one of my absolute favorite topics, which is adventuring with my kids and books. So talking about engaging teens in nature study through books and adventure, that was just so exciting. Um, how to create a cozy home. So this is something that I have been focusing on a lot, is how to make our home not just look pretty, but feel cozy. So that is another favorite of mine from this copy. And then last but certainly not least is this article about crafting a well-rounded education, high school electives with purpose. For me, navigating the high school years for the very first time and having four more that I'll be going through this process with, this was super relevant to me and so, so helpful. And reading these things from homeschool moms that have come before me has just been so encouraging and helpful to me and help to ease any fears that I might have. So these also make a great gift idea for a sister or a friend, and you can even print out a gift certificate to give them as well. I hope you enjoyed getting a look inside of the Learning Well journals, how absolutely beautiful they are. And I do wanna mention that if you want to be able to get your hands on the winter copy, then you need to order by November 3rd. That is the cutoff for getting the winter version. They're also coming out with a Christmas version. So keep your eyes peeled for that as well. And so I've put a link in the description box below for you to subscribe to Learning Well Journal. Let me know if you already have tried Learning Well Journal, what you love about it, and if you think you're going to grab the winter issue. Also let me know if you have any questions down below. 
The next thing I want to share, you may have seen me share before because I truly read this all throughout the year. I just realized when I was in the hammock yesterday reading this, I got to the end, towards the end of the October chapter, and I'm like, I feel like I've read this. But I know I had a bookmark in, so I didn't read this, but I'm so confused. And then all of a sudden it dawned on me and I'm like, yes, I did read this last October. And so I'm pretty sure that's when I started this book. And so the first quarter of this book, you can read anytime. And then every other chapter of the last three quarters of this book are month specific. So the way that I use this book is I read like towards the end of the current month, unless I'm late, I start to read next month's chapter to inspire me, to encourage me, to give me ideas about how to connect with my family and how to make my home a haven of rest. And so I cannot, if I had to like recommend one book for this topic, it would be this one, The Life-Giving Home by Sally Clarkson, Creating a Place of Belonging and Becoming. So highly recommend this book. The next thing that I want to share with you is a brand new bundle that is just launched today, and that is the Connected Family Bundle. This is all about building family connections in a variety of aspects from many different women of faith that have come together and shared their strengths and experiences of how we can better connect as families. And I know I feel super rested when I feel like my family is at peace, that we're connecting, and that helps me feel at peace. And so I did also contribute to this Connected Family Bundle. I've written an article for the magazine because there is an optional magazine that you can also upgrade to get. There is an optional video upgrade, and then there is the bundle itself. And I also contributed creating an evening family time to the main bundle as well as my adventure journal because my article is all about local travel and adventuring with your family as a way to connect so the adventure journal is just a fun thing to add into that connection so i hope you go and check out this bundle it is only available for a limited time and the link is down in the description box below next thing that i want to recommend to you are the bible studies that i use because the most important place to find peace and rest is the Bible. Like, of course, the word of God is life-giving. And it is the times that I think I'm too tired, I don't have time, or whatever it may be that I have reasons that I can't read my Bible, or that I don't prioritize it, or I put it off. Though I find that those are the times I really need it the most. And one thing that has helped to guide my reading of the Bible, although you don't need a devotional or a Bible study to read the Bible, you can just open up your Bible because the Word of God is living and active and sharper than any double-edged sword. And so I want to encourage you that you don't need a devotional, but if you find that you want something to help you dig deeper into the Bible, the Daily Grace Co. Bible studies have been my favorite way to do this. And so they either focus on a book of the Bible or a topic and they dig deep. So some devotionals I haven't loved just because I feel like they just take bite-sized pieces of the Bible. And although they might be encouraging, they don't give us the spiritual depth or solid theology that I am really looking for. And with Daily Grace Co., I don't ever feel that way. Even the way they begin lays a really strong foundation. It goes through the timeline of scripture. Um, it gives you a focus on the attributes of God and scripture references. This is before you even get to the actual Bible study. It goes over with you how to study the Bible. It goes over with you study suggestions and how to use this particular study. And then, I love this part. I went over this with my kids one day. Um, it also touches on the meta narrative of scripture and how important that understanding is before getting into the actual Bible study. So this is the most recent one that I got and it's Path to Purpose, a study on the book of Ecclesiastes. And this is really my heart in this season is leaning into my purpose. Like... Things that can drain our energy more than anything else 
are putting our energy into things that don't help us fulfill the purpose that God has created us for, that he's intended for us, whether it be as a whole in our lifetime, whether it be in the current season. It's really been on my heart, both these, both these aspects of rest and purpose, right? Like I feel like those two things go together so well because of the fact that we can rest in our purpose, right? And so I wanted to share this with you, not because I feel like you need this exact one. I haven't done it yet. I'm sure it's going to be amazing. But what I can tell you is the ones that I've done have been so helpful to me and not only digging deep into the word of God, but also helping me find rest and refreshment. So I just wanna show you also how beautiful they are. I am a visual person, so visual beauty is refreshing to me. And what I also love is there's places to really reflect through the questions. If you're doing this with someone else, you could do these as just discussion questions or you could each have your own copy. Or if you like to write, write in these, you can write in them. I have heard some people say they write the answers in their prayer journal or their study Bible because they wanna be able to keep these to use them again in their future. So that's also another way that you could use these. Other practical ways that I just wanna share that I feel rested are things like taking a hot bath. I know that it sounds like silly or simple and it may be like, yeah, of course, to some of you, but I remember when I first got married to my husband and he was like, why don't you take a bath? I forget why, like, I don't know if I was overwhelmed or my back hurt or what it was. And I was like, I don't have time to take a bath. And he was like, yes, you do. So anyways, long story short, he got me hooked on baths and it has been like one of my favorite things. Like I have to shower and get clean anyway. So really taking the time to rest using some Epsom salts because they do actually have health benefits not using things that have toxic chemicals. I'm just gonna throw that in there because that is not going to help your body feel rested and refreshed. Going for walks, getting out in nature is so refreshing to me. Sometimes this is by myself, but it's rare that this is by myself. Usually I'm doing this with my kids and usually it's restful because of the fact that when we get out in nature, I'm like, wow, this was a very different day than yesterday was. Yesterday felt overwhelming or stressful. We're like, I had so many things on my to-do list because we're home and I can see all the things I need to do. And there's something about getting out in the beauty of God's creation that is just so refreshing and restful for me. I mentioned earlier in the video, laying in the hammock and reading, sitting outside reading on my own. I do this with my kids too for our read alouds, but either doing it on my front porch in my rocking chair, having a cup of tea or coffee, and either reading or honestly just staring at the sky and the leaves and just taking that time to breathe and just be still. I talk to the Lord. This is like my, my kind of just casual prayer time where I'm thanking God and I'm asking him questions and I'm just trying to be still and hear from him, or I'm just simply at rest. I read my Learning Well journal or the Life Giving Home and I feel rested. Sometimes it's just a page or two. Sometimes that's all we get, right? Depending on the season of motherhood that we're in. And I used to be like, I don't have time to read or I can't even get through a full chapter without being interrupted. And I would end up more annoyed than I was rested. But I just want to encourage you that we sometimes need to just take the five minutes or the 10 minutes, or maybe some days you have an hour or part of a day or a whole day. But whatever time we get, we can trust that the Lord sees and he knows and he can take our rest and multiply it. And so I just want to encourage you, it might be a page or two, it might be a half a cup of tea, but we can really change our perspective for those moments of rest and thank God for them and allow him to fill us so that it can overflow into our homes, our marriages, and our children. I hope this video was encouraging to you. I hope it was a blessing. I hope you're able to get your hands on some of the resources that I shared, or at least try out, maybe it's one simple practice. You know what? I am gonna make myself a hot cup of tea and take my book and go sit outside somewhere and just read and rest. 
If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're not already subscribed, I would love if you'd stick around. I share lots of homeschool, motherhood, faith, and family life here on my channel. If you're not already following me over on Instagram, you can follow me over there at rooted underscore home life. You can follow learning well over on Instagram as well. And there is so much over there to encourage and inspire homeschool moms as well. Don't forget to check the link below to get your copy of the Winter Learning Well Journal. I hope to see you soon in one of my next videos and until next time, stay rooted.